National Football League. Sponsored by Edge Shave Gel, the ultimate protection for every kind of face. In 2001, a sleeping giant awoke in Chicago. In their final season at Old Soldier Field, the Bears added an unforgettable chapter to their storied legacy with a season-long bash beneath the colonnades. What a party! Right here! What a party! Right here! What a party! Right here! In the final season of the NFC Central Division, the Bears reached for the prize. Down their seat, but they're still yeah. for the touchdown. And never let go. He wanted that end zone. Led by a core of young stars, the Bears heralded a new era of Chicago football. I do. With the third greatest single season turnaround in NFL history. Anthony Thomas was rolling thunder right there. They stormed through 13 wins in a season-long game of can you top this? Playmakers, take over a football game. Catch it, get it, get it, get it. I don't know how he did it, but he caught it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. We're kicking their ass. Come on, guys. Let's keep up pumping. Keep up pumping, baby. And the Bears defense holds again. All now, year long. That wow. was the slowest 80-yard interception return I've ever seen. 2001 brought a season unlike any other. For the Bears, it brought a revival that was both inspired and inspiring. They cannot beat us. They cannot beat us. Unless we beat ourselves. Short set, quick throw, slant. Oh, oh it's going to be intercepted up the ball. Mike Brown's got it. Mike Brown! That's intercepted the ball. The Bears have won. It's going to be a tip off. The Bears began the 2001 season at the home of the Super Bowl champion Ravens. Outside their own locker room, little was expected of the Bears. But in this game, it was difficult to tell which team boasted the most feared defense in football and which was coming off a last place season. The Bears noted their strong performance for one reason. They lost. Something they would not do again for over two months. The streak began a week later when the offense came to life behind quarterback Jim Miller. Over the middle, complete. Marty Rucker, roll at the 10. One, two. He gets it to the end zone for a touchdown. Fourth quarter touchdowns by Marty Booker and Marcus Robinson gave the Bears their first win against the Vikings in two years. Going left side. Marcus Robinson gets up and grabs it into the end zone for a touchdown. Next for the Bears was a visit to Atlanta. In 2002, Chris Chandler will join John Shoup's no bull offense. In 2001, three interceptions and a first half knockout taught Chandler about the Bears' no bull defense. Michael Vick fared no better. Oh, 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 yeah, Phil Daniels, the ball yes. is picked up. Mike picked Vick, up Mike. by Brian Erlacher running down the right sideline. Brian Erlacher's 90 yard dash down the Falcons' sideline sealed the Chicago victory and signaled the arrival of the Bears' defense as one of football's elite units. Indeed, the Bears had constructed a perfectly balanced machine around their second-year centerpiece. With speed and muscle everywhere on the field, Greg Blatch's defense was so effective that every time the Bears scored at least 13 points, they won. The key additions to the D were hard to miss. You better bring me lunch, because I'm damn sure going to eat it. Mostly what Ted Washington and Keith Trailer ate was space. 
Together, they made an immovable wall in the middle of the field, forcing offenses to look elsewhere for running room. Ams Brian Robinson and Philip Daniels secured the outside, while linebackers Warwick Holdman and Roosevelt Colvin made plays all over the field. Holdman just ripped it out of the hands of David Sloan. Colvin became the first pair linebacker since Otis Wilson to record double-digit sacks. And Holdman finished with 145 tackles, second only to the man in the middle, who cemented his status as one of the best all-around players in pro football. As comfortable chasing ball carriers outside the pocket as he is sacking them inside it, Erlacher's range on the football field may be limitless. Not that it needs to be. Behind him, cornerback R.W. McQuarters and safety Mike Brown anchored a vastly improved secondary, combining for nearly 200 tackles and eight interceptions. With their team holding on to a tenuous seven-point lead against the Cardinals in week five, Brown and McQuarters combined to make the decisive play of the Bears' third straight and, uh, victory. Being oh, 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 oh. It pops up to Adelie McQuarters. McQuarters is in a foot race with Jake Homer to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the end zone for the touchdown. And that's the turnover we were asking for. One week after McQuarters' knockout punch, it was the Bears' offense that appeared down for the count when wide receiver Marcus Robinson was lost for the season with a knee injury. But this was the day the Bears unleashed an offensive force, the likes of which Chicago had not seen in over a decade. After a quiet first month in the NFL, Anthony Thomas exploded onto the scene, setting a Bears rookie record with 188 yards rushing against the Bengals. Anthony Thomas looking for running room and he gets the corner. The A-train had arrived, and the Bears hopped on board for a punishing shutout of the Bengals. A-train to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone! The Bears are about ready to blow out the Bengals. To their four-game winning streak and their dominating defense, the Bears had added a time-tested offensive ingredient, the power running game. The offensive line of pro bowlers Olin Krutz and James Big Cat Williams, along with Chris Valerio, Blake Brockermeyer, and Rex Tucker, started every game together. The welcome sight of 25-year-old center Krutz, number 57, laying down tracks for train number 35, is something Bears fans can look forward to for years to come. Off the left side, has a hole, 15. With nearly 1,200 yards rushing, Thomas arrived like a Comet, a Kansas Comet, becoming the Bears' first NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year since Gale Sayers in 1965. Hardly a month into the season, the Bears had discovered something special. With a 4-1 and one record, the Bears returned to Soldier Field to play another resurgent power, the 49ers. It was a game that figured to be the stiffest test of the Bears' young season. A game that turned out to be a test of much more. I ain't leaving this place without a victory! I ain't leaving this place without a victory! Soldiers! 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 Early on, the Bears appeared overwhelmed. That second center is Miller is hit, and the ball is loose, picked up by the 49ers. They're going to run it in. Ryan what Young. the heck happened was... there? By the midpoint of the third quarter, the Bears trailed by 19, and Jim Miller had left the game with a hip pointer. The door! The Niners might have left just a crack in the door, but Shane Matthews and a couple of Michigan boys pried it open. Get off Anthony Thomas. Get some running room. He's to the 10. Thomas to the 5. To the end zone. Anthony Thomas and fellow rookie David Terrell combined for three touchdowns in just over a quarter. Matthews has time. Terrell's second career touchdown was even more impressive than his first. Matthews running to his left side, looking into the end zone. Throws to Terrell. He catches. Yes! 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 Oh, he did it, but he caught it. There was a defender right in his face. I'm telling you guys, they win this game. You're seeing a hell of a victory from your life that or not. With 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, the Bears had drawn to within a two-point conversion of tying the game. 
Matthews from under center. The handoff, Anthony Thomas puts his head down, and he is in on a two-point conversion. And the Bears have tied this game with 26 seconds to play, and they come back from 19 down. After 40 minutes, the game was a blowout. After 60, it was a thriller. 16 seconds into overtime, it became a classic. Short set, quick throw, slant. Oh, oh it's going to be a oh. shot. Mike Brown's got it. He's got it. 15, he's to the 10. Shortest overtime in NFL history was one the Bears will long remember. Off the hands of the best player on the 49ers, Darrell Owens and Mike Brown went into the end zone, 32 yards. Hey, right place, right time. Five and one, Chicago Bears. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it, baby? Even more unthinkable than the comeback was the reprise a week later. With less than a minute remaining in the fourth quarter, the Browns led by two touchdowns. The Bears had them right where they wanted them. Throw Shane in the end zone, touchdown. Marty Booker with a catch. Oh, it's been a strange season, guys. In 28 seconds, the Bears would need to recover an onside kick and score a touchdown just to tie the game. The kick, it bounces at 40, it's up in the air, and it's tipped up. I don't know who has it, where is it, and who's got it. It certainly was there for the taking. It's a pointing match. The Bears think they have it. Come on. Yes, yeah, Bears, Bears football. Oh. We got 24 Woo. seconds and one timeout. Guys. Let's go, boys. Two plays later, the Bears had zero timeouts and stood 34 yards away from the end zone. Matthew stands in the pocket, steps up, heaves the ball, down into the end zone. It's going to be a tip ball. second straight week, the Bears were headed to overtime. For the second straight week, overtime was Mike Brown's time. Ball is tipped up by Brian Robinson. Go! 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 He's going to score another touchdown. Mike Brown for the second consecutive week. In 123 minutes and six seconds, the Bears had authored one of the most dramatic episodes in team history. Won six straight games, and they had won over their fans. Now they set out to win a more elusive prize, their first playoff berth since 1994, as Jim Miller returned to lead the Bears in six straight games against division rivals. In the absence of Marcus Robinson, Miller found a new favorite target in Marty Booker. In just his third year, Booker emerged as Chicago's most consistent and versatile receiver, leading the Bears in receptions in 11 of 16 games. He finished the year with 100 catches, the first Bear ever to reach that mark, and he led the team with eight touchdowns. Miller to throw, right down the seam. Oh. Together, Booker and Miller gave the Bears a credible downfield threat, completing eight passes of 25 yards or more, none bigger than those that came against the Bucks in Week 10. The Bucks had won five straight against the Bears in Tampa, but now the Bears were leading the division, and they needed a win to stay on top. It was Miller and Booker who made the difference, connecting for three touchdowns. The first, a 28-yard strike, gave the Bears their first lead of the game. The second came early in the third quarter. Play action fake. Miller going up top. Down to the sideline. Booker is open. Fingertip catch. Over the shoulders for the touchdown. 
On their next offensive play from scrimmage, Miller hit Booker again, this time for 66 yards, Chicago's longest offensive play of the year. Bang, bang, 11 seconds, 66 yards on the deep ball to Book, his 60th pitch of the year, his third touchdown. The Bears had their first win in Tampa in six years, and they were back on top of the NFC Central. But to stay there, the Bears would have to beat the Vikings on the road without Anthony Thomas. Return handoff to Leon Johnson. Puts into the secondary. Rising to the challenge, James Allen and Leon Johnson, number 32, combined for nearly 150 rushing yards and a touchdown. To the 10 and knocked out of bounds. For the second time in the season, the defense shut down the potent Viking offense. Minnesota entered the red zone only once, with just over five minutes remaining in the game. The Vikings had not gone without a touchdown in six years. But on three Viking tries from the one, the Bears' defense held. And the Vikes' streak of games with a touchdown ended at 98. Week 12 found the Bears going for their ninth victory against the winless Lions. But somehow, the Lions nearly stole the game. With the Bears clinging to a 13-10 lead and nearly four minutes remaining, the D came through with the kind of big play they made all year and stopped the Lions' drive. Detroit threatened again on their last possession. But Jason Hansen's third miss of the day saved the win for the Bears. It wasn't pretty, but the Bears had won three straight division games and were still in first place. The Bears were still four wins away from clinching their division. But with a second win against the Bucks, they could secure a playoff berth. Did they realize what's at stake today? We're going for our 10th victory and, and get in the playoffs. The defense met the challenge, forcing four turnovers and holding the Bucks to a field goal. When the Bears needed something extra to prevent a touchdown that could have tied the game, the secondary delivered. Oh, gets up the ball. It's loose at the two. Picked up by the Bears. Chicago built a 20-3 lead by the mid-third quarter with touchdowns catches by Marty Booker and Fred Baxter. With the game in hand, the Bears unleashed Anthony Thomas, who piled up 146 yards and a touchdown in the second half. The Bears had made the playoffs for the first time since 1994, but they had the division still to win. And in week 15, they used a little special team's trickery to beat the Redskins. Trailing 13 to 10 in the fourth quarter, the Bears lined up in field goal formation. But punter Brad Maynard took the snap and rolled out, then lofted a 28-yard pass downfield. The unlikely receiver was linebacker Brian Erlacher, who caught the ball and ran it in for the winning touchdown. They called it the Ninja, and it was the kind of play that special teams coach Mike Sweatman cooked up all year long. Maynard was a solid asset, setting a Bears record with 36 punts downed inside the 20 and only seven touchbacks, supported by cover men like Bobby Howard, pro bowler Larry Wigger, and long snapper Patrick Mantle. In only his second year, kicker Paul Edinger was equally reliable setting Bears single-season records for field goal accuracy and distance. In Week 16 at Detroit, it was the offense that hit the ground running, scoring touchdowns on their first two possessions, with Miller completing six passes for 140 yards on the two drives. The score was 14 to nothing with five minutes left in the first quarter. After that, it was all defense, with Walt Harris scoring on the Bears' third interception of the day. It's a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Walt Harris! The Bears had won home field advantage for their first playoff game, but they had yet to clinch the division. To do that, they would have to beat the Jaguars in the last regular season game at Old Soldier Field. Going into the game, the Bears had already achieved the biggest turnaround in franchise history. But Dick Geron's team had bigger goals in mind. 
and the Bear defense played like it, dominating the Jaguars to end the year with the fewest points allowed in the NFL. But what everyone will remember most is Keith Trailer's tip, pick, and rumble. And he is rumbling. 40 yards right. Pass it off. Trailer looking for help. It's a big ugly one of a big, big interception and a rumble down the right side. For only the fourth time ever, the Bears had won 13 games. And for the first time in 10 years, they had won the NFC Central Division title. We went right through it, huh? Yep. We went right through that window. I don't know anybody that deserves it more than you guys. Honest to God, I don't know anybody that deserves it more than you. On January 19, 2002, the Bears said goodbye to old Soldier Field. And sadly, goodbye to a season that surpassed all expectations but their own. This was not the Bears' day. But a game that meant so much mattered less to the NFL's Coach of the Year than a valiant team that never stopped fighting. One could pardon the Bears and their fans for wanting their season to last forever. But the bitterness of a playoff loss will fade for a team whose future is bright with promise. In 2002, the Bears will make a new temporary home down the road in Champaign and a new permanent home in the NFC North Division. Should they continue along the path they traveled in 2001, the Bears will do just fine wherever they play. And when the Bears return to Chicago in 2003, the historic colonnades will stand behind a new Soldier Field. The Bears' revival in the Windy City has only just begun. The future looks bright indeed. Edge Pro Joe presents the Chicago Bears' ultimate performance of 2001. Trailing the Browns by 14 points with less than a minute to play, the Bears scored two touchdowns to send the game to overtime. It's going to be a tip-off. The Bears' second straight OT victory capped a six-game winning streak and catapulted them to their first division title in a decade. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Either a giver or a taker. The moment of truth. Where do I want to be? Sunday. Special people make special plays on special days. Sunday. You gotta want it. It's all about who want it right now. Let's go. When does football breathe? Sunday. I sweat. I dream. I need football. I will lead. I will inspire. I will be myself. I will be the best. I will intimidate. I will run for the record. Today, we return to reclaim our day. Sunday, the only day that really matters. Are you ready? Seven months have passed. Have you missed us? Sunday. 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 The only day that matters. It's our time now. it's the only day that matters it's the special opening sunday edition of sunday nfl countdown from the meadowlands to our haunts in bucolic bristol we're more than ready willing and able to kick this thing off hi chris berman welcome to the 2002 season hope you enjoyed our thursday opener with me as always for the 53rd season with me this year, Tom Jackson. Not all 50 Paper three. football must have hit you right between the eyes. Is that why you're on? <laughs> yeah. See, okay, see, we're nervous. A little bit nervous. So in the slot this year, we got Sterling Sharp. And you've been hanging with Steve Young with the word bucolic this early in the season. I, well, I'm an honorary. Are you nuts? I'm an honorary left-hander like Steve Young. <laughs> Hello, Steve. 
Not superfluous. Super, no, that, that, that we don't get hit. Don't even sides. start. Okay. Yeah. And, We're going to sandwich you. And look who's here with us every Sunday this year. Coach Bill Parcells, welcome uh, to Connecticut. I don't know how good my stamina is, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> well, I think you're okay, Coach. Hey, you know, we, we okay, one team already sitting there 1-0 and for, for three days, which is nice. We look at opening day. We, we looking for some theme today, fellas? Quarterbacks beware, because there's going to be an awful lot of pressure via the blitz on all teams that play on this Sunday. There will be a lot of blitz, but I'm looking for a bullet proof offense to start to develop a Super Bowl offense so they don't have to watch our championship team go one for 11 on third down in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I don't know what's going to happen today, but what I can guarantee you of is Tuesday morning, there's going to be 16 head coaches taking aspirin, shaking their heads, saying, are we going to ever win a game? It, it, it's the part of the season that I love because the defense is always ahead of the offense for the first month of the season. You would like that. You oh, would yeah. like that. You would like that. Well, it looked like it on, on Thursday night, that's for sure. Well, you guys know as well as me, you can only read so much into the preseason. But you talk about a story developing in a hurry in the preseason. Steve Spurrier coaching at the Washington Redskins. I mean, damn the torpedoes. We're going to pass it. We're going to move it. We're gonna, it began in Japan against the Niners. It went in the air. And when it was done, Washington went 4-1 and one this August, scoring 164 points, by far the most in the league. That's 33 a game preseason the most eyebrow-raising score of the entire preseason. If you ask me, Redskins 40, Bucks 10 at Tampa. Today, they try it for real against their one-time division foe, now NFC West team, Arizona. Let's move on to FedEx Field and welcome in for the season, Sal Palantonio. Sal, happy opening day. Opening day to you, Boomer. We've got confirmed delivery of Steve Spurrier here at FedEx Field. Here he is coming off the team bus through the tunnel here to FedEx for his inaugural debut here in Washington. You know, Spurrier's done, tried to do a lot the last couple of days to really ratchet down the excitement around him, the attention on him. He stayed in the team hotel last night in Greenbelt with the rest of the team. He had a meeting and basically, in effect, apologized for all the attention that has been focused on him, saying he's been a little bit embarrassed by it. An interesting scene last night at the team hotel. Spurrier and a lot of the coaches arrived at the same time that his former Gators were taking the field against the University of Miami, but at 6 o'clock, clock precisely there was a team meal they all left the TV went to the team meal then to the team meetings of the offensive and defensive meetings luckily they missed the second half of that game when the Gators got swamped in the swamp you know on the football field in the last two preseason games against Pittsburgh and against the Patriots they were really are really surprised by a lot of the blitzes that those two teams used against them a lot of disguised defensive schemes that they weren't ready for had them scurrying back to the film room back to the drawing board a little bit to try to redraw up some of the offensive schemes that they will use in the regular season. We should see a lot of Steven Davis, but you know what? All of this, Boomer, cannot really dim the hype that's really surrounding Spurrier's debut. This is the most anticipated inaugural in Washington since 1992, when another son of the South came here, the man from Hope, Arkansas. A lot of people are hoping that Steve Spurrier can regain what was lost here in Washington with the Redskins. Well, that, of course, was President Clinton and they all play don't stop thinking about tomorrow you know Fleetwood Mac at any rate that's just an aside Sal Moore from you later all right so FedEx field all year long will we absolutely positively <laughs> see points scored overnight or is this going to be an experiment going awry well I like what Steve Spurrier has done coming to Washington because what he has done guys is the focus is not on the players and he has brought identity he has brought confidence to a team that's identity and confidence was only in what Steven Davis was able to bring I'll, no tell, I'll tell you what he has He's got something that every offensive <laughs> head coach needs. That's a defensive coordinator. Yes, he and does. Three yes, great he does. defensive yes, he does. players. Right. Champ Bailey, LeVar Arrington, Jeremiah Trotter. Well, I tell you, he, they, they definitely had him drinking the Kool-Aid down there. You talk to the Redskins, they really believe that <laughs> yeah, they're they, going to they, score they, 30 points a game on average. Three really intriguing things about Steve Spurrier. One, is he going to change the hours of the assistant coaches <laughs> from 6 in the morning to 12 at night to just 9 to 5? And then is that system really just about the system or can it be just about the players? I think he thinks it's just the system. Well, Steve, I think if you look at the big package, LeVar Arrington will be the Ray Lewis that Marvin Lewis had when he was with the Baltimore Ravens. And if Steve Spurrier can do just half of what Daniel Snyder paid him the $25 million to do, then he's going to get a chance to play. This is Marvin Lewis, the coordinator, with 
the lead, something he hasn't done for a number of long for a number of years. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna win some 40 to 3, they hope, and lose some 40 to 3. If they lose some 40 to 3, does he change anything or just keep going? Or just keep winging it. That's what they used to do in the swamp. They're not going to lose 40 to 3 <laughs> if Marvin uh, Lewis in that defense. Good. That's not going to happen. Their defense is too good for that. They're going to get a lot of plays. They got corners, they got linebackers, and they got some veteran Their defense players. is going to get a lot of plays. And they got Arizona today, a team that on paper, and we caution that term, on paper, like that paper football Tommy kick, <laughs> that they, they should or could and should win the game. From the high-octane skins to a high-powered two hours, right up until kickoff, your place to get set for Sunday's kickoff, 2002 is right here. And don't go away. When we return, Mortimer will tell us why Peyton Manning may be headed out of Indy. What? 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 Hey, see, don't go anywhere. Be Sunday NFL countdown or an NFL season for that matter without the words of wisdom, not to mention the uh, wisdom teeth of our Chris Mortensen. Happy opening day, uh, happy opening Sunday, pal. Oh, it's good to be here, Boom. I think we're already having a lot of fun. All I can tell you right now is Tim Couch in the Cleveland Browns. Couch not going to start the day. He is on the field as we speak, testing his arm, playing catch with Kelly Hope, and to see, in fact, if he can even be the number three, two quarterback.